You're sitting in a hip Tokyo cafe having fish cake and sake. Your server has been especially attentive, so when the check arrives, you think nothing of pulling out some extra yen and leaving a healthy 20% tip. But suddenly, things go terribly wrong, horribly wrong. The server turns wide-eyed, becomes agitated, and walks away. What will you do? What will you do? Stay tuned for the answer to this dilemma. Everett Potter is my guest on Travel Show Live with Steve Perillo. Is that a reading? Welcome back to Travel Show Live with Steve Perillo. Today's guest is Everett Potter. Potter, Everett Potter. Uh, he has one of the most famous travel reports or a blog online. It's updated frequently. It has great travel reports from around the world. And what makes this website so fantastic is that it's written by an industry writer who has spent the last two decades writing for some of the best newspapers and magazines in the U.S. And we're going to get back to that uh, Japanese yen tipping story, but I want to ask Everett what he's been doing all these decades. What have I been doing all these decades? <laughs> Besides uh, traveling and writing mostly, yeah. How would you get started? How does it uh, happen? I had a chance to go to China in 1984, and I took that chance, and I started writing. I was already writing fiction at that time. And um, came back and sold a couple of stories, went to the Washington Post, and it sort of s snowballed from there. Mm -hmm. Wrote for the New York Times Syndicate for about 18 years. Was the first guy to write about travel for smart money in the 90s. Currently have a column for USA Weekend and contributing editor at Ski and various and sundry other places. You make it sound so easy. Oh, it's You're a writer. I mean, uh, yeah. the, 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 did you have a first break where you got a big story or a big I, assignment? I would say a series. It, I wouldn't say one big break. It's a series of breaks more yeah. than anything else. Small yeah. steps. Small steps, yeah. They add up, though. Steps. Because travel writing is an extremely rarefied profession. There's so they tell how me, many yes. professional working travel writers. Is there any hope for our viewers, Absolutely. our children, to Absolutely. dream of being a travel writer someday? Is yeah, and it's probably, it's probably a good topic for another show. But all yeah, right. I, I would think uh, we can talk about that. Right, sure. I go off on tangents. I'm sorry. So That's all right. Be in That's line, right. please. <laughs> Everett, I really want to talk to you about this Yen story, this, because this comes from you. Yeah, uh, it's a travel and leisure story a couple of years ago, yeah. So uh, what, sh what should you do uh, when you tip in... Uh, in a Japanese restaurant and you made a mistake, just run? Or what, what happened there? What happened in this? Ninjas, look out! Enjoy yourself because the bill is going to be larger than you think anyway mm -hmm. and there's no need to add 20%. I think the most important takeaway from this is that you really have to know the rules in whatever country you go to, not just tipping rules but other customs and you know behaviors as well. But J Japan is a place where you shouldn't count on tipping. There's a few other places, too. Because socially, it's considered an insult somehow. And socially, it's considered an insult. We were chatting beforehand. Right, I mean, I, I actually had a, a cab driver in Beijing throw money back at me, literally through the hole in the taxi once. Wow. Um, he was, and he was very insulted. He was very ticked off that I had done that. So, so why didn't you know, Everett? Why didn't you I guess I didn't know. I mean, it's, a lear <laughs> it's a learning curve. It's a very steep learning curve. I, mean, and I, I think you, nowadays, if you tipped him, he would probably ask you for twice as much as you're tipping him. So, right, uh, because they've learned things have changed. about us, things too, have changed and they know they could take yeah. advantage of us, yeah, probably. That's true. You know, in Russia, I go there uh, once in a while to do my music. It's a little side thing. If right. you smile at someone in the street, they consider that very offensive because hmm. you're, you're showing that uh, certain uh, rapport is, uh, with someone that you don't know. And it's, it's a little like New York, in other words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. There you go. No, we understand it. Uh, so your uh, report, uh, I, I want to talk about some of the uh, topics you cover, sure. especially skiing. And you're a late uh, comer to skiing. I started right? skiing in my 30s, yeah, and Isn't just became something? fanatical about it. And I've skied all over the world, quite frankly. I've been very lucky in that regard. And the Everett Potter Travel <laughs> Report covers skiing a lot or a, some, a certain amount? Some, a certain amount. It, the focus really is more on value. It's on finding the good value, whether it's a, a bed and breakfast in Hawaii or the five-star hotel in Hawaii that's offering you 35% off their, their mm -hmm. rates mm -hmm. in order to get you to their room. So yes. both can count as value. Right. Well, you're in your value heaven right now. This is Indeed. value time. It's, it's sorting through maybe 20 to 50 emails a day touting a deal, a bargain, so-called value one way or the other. I can't tell you what you're doing. I've got to be honest with the audience. Uh, to 
to yeah. continue the business going, we are making, uh, putting no markup on anything. We're trying to get the people going, keep people coming, yeah. to make a little bit to keep things going. But it's business is so bad. This is the greatest time to travel in our lifetime. I think it There's is. No doubt I really do think it is. Yeah, I think you're right. So what else you got up your sleeve as far as values or uh, that you cover in the report? Well, I, you mentioned skiing. Let's talk about skiing mm -hmm. for one second. One of the best times to go skiing traditionally is January. People have spent all their money during Christmas vacation, and they're, or they're saving their money to go during uh, school vacation in February. Mm -hmm. So for those who can get away who don't have school-age kids especially, January is one of the best times to find a great deal in a hotel and find a great deal in airfare, too. Whereabouts? Uh, U.S., for starters, fly to Salt Lake. You'll find a great deal in, in the mountains surrounding Salt Lake. 45-minute drive, you've got seven mountains in front of you to ski. Go to Denver. You're going to have to drive a little bit farther, but mm -hmm. Colorado resorts are ready to uh, offer you, you know, very good value. And Europe. I mean, Europe, Europe skiing in January well, is hold a on. terrific time. Why did you time. skip over New England, my, uh, my ask? Is that, uh, I'm sorry, <coughs> um, I don't know skiing. Is it? Uh, ski well, I'm talking about... Good skiing. <laughs> I'm sorry, New England. No, 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 no. <laughs> I love the resorts in New England, but if I had my choice, I'd yeah. rather get in a plane and go out west or, or go to, to Europe. Europe. Go Where to Europe. in Europe? I love to ski in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I love to z go to Zermatt. I like a, a smaller resort called Villar. I spent a lot of time in Austria, in uh, the Arlberg region, St. Anton, Lec, Zurs. Uh, Italy, which you know Cortina, rather well. Anything Cortina. Like Cortina yeah. Cortina is one of my favorite places to go if only to see the people walking down the street yeah. in the passeggiata every night in their fur coats. They still do the passe passeggiata is where they walk with no cars, they walk arm in arm, and it used to be to check uh, for dating purposes, young people check each other out, or also to... Well, these are, this is Prada and Agnelli and uh, right. uh, Ferrari checking each other out as they walk right. down the street. So Cortina's it's a great one, show. It's one of the most expensive resort areas in the world. It is, it's, but you can stay in a bed and breakfast and bring the cost down. You don't have to stay in a five-star palatial hotel there. Right. But the best deal now for skiing in January, oh, I would what say part of the world is exchange rate considering travel? I would airfare. say the United States, absolutely. United States. And you can even go to Canada. The exchange rate is not as great right now. I mean, we're not, mm -hmm. the dollar is very weak against the Canadian mm -hmm. dollar. It's almost parity at this point in time. But I would say go, go west, young man or woman. I will part. take that advice yeah. because it's not too late for me, is it? Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> let me look at those feet again. <laughs> Should I show my white socks to the audience? Yes, I don't think everyone's seen this really. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Where's my carrot? All right. What do you think? Nice. On that note, we're going to have Everett Potter back. But uh, when we do, I'm going to ask him five questions to ask before your next adventure trip travel. Because you, don't, you should always have those five questions. And we're going to talk about a few other things too. So hurry back.